Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias Antioch and Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Saturday, November 11th, 2023, and here are the readings for today. Today's epistle reading is from St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 4, verses 6 through 15. Brethren, it is the God who said, Let light shine out of the darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, to show that the transcendent power belongs to God and not to us. We are inflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Since we have the same spirit of faith as he who wrote, I believed, and so I spoke, we too believe, and so we speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus, and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 9, verses 37 through 43. Let us be attentive. At that time, as Jesus had come down from the mountain, a great crowd met him, and behold, a man from the crowd cried, Teacher, I beg you to look upon my son, for he is my only child. And behold, a spirit seizes him, and he suddenly cries out. It convulses him till he foams and shatters him, and will hardly leave him. And I begged your disciples to cast it out, but they could not. Jesus answered, O faithless and perverse generation, how long am I to be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here. While he was coming, the demon tore him and convulsed him. But Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the boy, and gave him back to his father. And all were astonished at the majesty of God. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. A little bit of context is very helpful for understanding this particular passage because, in a sense, we go from the sublime to the ridiculous. In the chapter before what happens in this particular account, our Lord is on Mount Tabor. He is transfigured in the presence of his disciples, Peter, James, and John. They're able to see Christ as he is in his true divinity at least insofar as they are able to see it. To see it purely would be to be obliterated, but he, in his mercy, shows them what his divinity is like without overwhelming them. So they're coming down from the hill, and there is a bit of a ruckus going on because the other disciples are trying to do what they can to heal this man's son, and they are failing miserably. And so our Lord, coming down from the hill, having just transfigured himself, is now in the throes of other disciples who just don't get it. And so he kind of unleashes on them. And then, in his mercy, once he has had his say, his moment of exasperation, how long am I to bear with you? How long am I to deal with you? Bring the child to me. And the child is brought and our Lord is able to heal him. And then the other disciples, in a different account, ask why it was not possible for them to remove the demon. And our Lord tells them that this kind of demon can only be removed by prayer and fasting. So what was happening with Peter, James, and John before they went up to Mount Tabor? They were praying and they were fasting for six to eight days, depending on which translation you read, they spent that time really honing their skills, 
becoming the people they were meant to be, holy people, faithful people, people of great belief. There is the beatitude, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. That is the beginning of understanding of how Peter, James, and John were able to see our Lord transfigured on Mount Tabor. Because when they see him transfigured, they see him as God. So their spiritual state must have been far greater than those of the other disciples trying to remove the demon. And so that's why our Lord is exasperated, because they're falling upon all sorts of other things, just using the name and and that's it, or using the fact that they know Jesus and that's it, not anything more than that. And as a result, they fail. So our Lord vents on them and then heals them, the Son and themselves. Well, I pray that God will bless you and those that you love today and always. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Thank you very much for joining me. You have a great day, God willing. We'll see you tomorrow.